All right, so today we're going to continue talking about our logarithms, um, but now we're going to take a look at some different properties of logarithms and, and how we can um, maybe condense a couple of logarithms together, right? And in order to do that, we have to remember that logarithms are nothing more than an exponent, right? It's just a different way of writing an exponent. So any exponent rules that we had from before still apply with um, our logarithms. For example, um, remember that when we multiply two like bases with exponents, we always added them, right? So this is going to be x to the 2 plus 5 or x to the 7th, right? Uh, same thing down here, the c to the 9th times c to the 12th is add those, and you get c to the 21st. So multiplying those guys turned into addition. Well, kind of the same thing with logarithms, where... If you have two logarithms, right, or I guess we ought to go back to the multiplication part, right? So if we have a logarithm of um, two factors, right, or logarithm of, of two things getting multiplied together in our argument, right? Multiplication with exponents meant we were adding stuff. Well, same thing here. Multiplication means we're adding stuff. We can split those factors or we can split those two items up into their own logarithm using addition. Addition goes to multiplication, multiplication goes to addition is what this boils down to, right? And I really want to look at trying, trying to go backwards. If I've got two logarithms with the same base that are being added together, then I can merge those into one, one logarithm with the same base and then multiply the arguments together. So for example, log 6 plus log 8. Same logarithm, same base. Multiplication leads to, sorry, addition leads to multiplication. So this becomes log of 6 times 8 or log of 48. Okay. Same thing here, right? Same log, same log base. Addition leads to multiplication. So I merge this into one logarithm and make this 4 times 10 or log base 2 of 40. Okay. Um, nothing changes if variables are introduced. Same log, same log bases. Since we're adding, addition leads to multiplication. <clears throat> so I'm going to take 4x times 8x and make this log base 6 of 32x squared. Okay. Now, division. Remember that with division, we always subtracted the exponents. 8 minus 5 here to get x to the third. But this is the same thing. 10 minus 6, this ends up being c to the fourth. The important thing here is with exponents, division and subtraction get linked together. So if I have a log of a base where I'm dividing two things in the argument, then I can split those up into their own logarithms and make this the logarithm of the numerator minus the logarithm of the denominator, and vice versa. If I've got two bases, sorry, two logs with the same base, and they're being subtracted, then I can turn that into one logarithm, making that division, and the first guy is always in the numerator, the second guy is always in the denominator. For example, this, I've got two logarithms, same base, that are being subtracted. Subtraction leads to division, so I always want to put the first guy in the numerator, the second guy in the denominator, and 18 divided by 3 is 6. So this is log 6. Don't drop the logarithm. We're merging down to 1, not merging down to none. Okay? Same thing here, log base 5, log base 5. We're separated by subtraction here, so this becomes log base 5 of 2x over 4. And then you can simplify the 2 over the 4, into log base 5 of x over 2. Okay? All right, how about this one? Why don't you try it? Stop the video and start back up and see if you're right. Okay? Two logarithms, same base, separated by subtraction. Make it one logarithm and turn this into a division problem. 16x to the third over 4x. Simplify 16 divided by 4 is 4, and then x to the third over x. Subtract 3 minus 1, this becomes 4x squared. 
Okay. Now, next rule. The last exponent rule is that if you are raising a power to a power, then you multiplied these guys, right? So an exponent raised to an exponent, you just multiply and make this x to the 12. Same thing here, x to the 28th. Same thing here, right? Remember that exponents are nothing more than, an, uh, sorry, logarithms are nothing more than an exponent. This is an exponent, okay? This exponent is being raised to an exponent. So we should multiply those exponents together. We can multiply those exponents together. So I can rewrite this as n times log base b of u. In other words, I can pull the n down as a coefficient. Opposite is, is, is true as well. We can go the other way. If I have a coefficient in a logarithm, I can write that as an exponent on the argument inside the logarithm. That's the way we're going to go most of the time. So for example here, I've got 5 times this exponent. So I want to make this an exponent of an exponent. In other words, bring the 5 in as an exponent of the argument x to the 5th. Same thing here. This coefficient becomes an exponent over here. Log base 8 of x to the 3rd. You try. Stop the video, start it back up, and see if you're right. Did you get log base 6 of x to the ninth? Just bring this guy up. Okay? That's pretty much it. Those are our three properties for logarithms that we're going to use. And, and again, most of the time this is going to be in a situation of solving an equation where we want to condense down to one logarithm. Okay? So, we're going to put it all together now. Something like this. If we want to condense down to one logarithm, we do have to follow the order of operations. Remember PEMDAS? PEMDAS says do inside the parentheses, then uh, do your exponents, then multiply, divide, add, subtract. So nothing, no parentheses here, so I want to take care of my exponents. Remember that these coefficients are exponents. We can just bring them in as exponents. And then, two log bases are the same. Well, now we're going to do our addition, turn that into multiplication. Get log base 2 of x to the 3rd times y to the 4th. And we're there. Okay. Another one. Coefficients to exponents first. There's not one on the first guy. On the second guy, we've got this 4. So I want to rewrite, and rewriting is going to be your friend. Rewrite as much as you feel like you need to. I would rewrite all the time. Make this y to the fourth. Now, we don't have any more coefficients, so we got to take care of our subtraction. One logarithm, log base 4, and then we make this division. x over y to the fourth, and we're done. Okay. How about this guy? I'm going to give you a second. You can try it. Stop the video. Start it back up and see if you're right. Okay, I want to bring this 2 over as a power on the x, so x squared. And then I want to deal with the addition. So addition turns into multiplication. So I want to take 5 times x squared and get 5x squared under one logarithm log base 10. Okay? Try this one. Start it back up and see how you do. Alright? So bring this guy up as a power, this guy up as a power, so you get log of x to the 10th minus log of 10 squared. We can go ahead and square the 10 if we want and just make this 100. And then we deal with the subtraction right here. And we go log x to the 10th over 100. Make that division. Okay? And we're down to the one logarithm and we know we're done. 
Now getting a little bit more difficult where we're going to add another logarithm here to merge down. So three logarithms into one. Our rules are still the same. Coefficients first, and then we're going to work left to right. So I'm going to write this log of 6 plus this becomes log 2 squared minus log of 3. The 2 squared I can turn into a 4. And then we work left to right. I want to condense these two guys first. Make this log base 6, sorry, log of, sorry, log base 10 of 6 times 4. minus log base 10 of 3. 6 times 4 is 24. Then we've got a subtraction. Subtraction links to division, so we go log of 24 over 3, which we can divide out, and get log of 8. And that means the same thing. Okay? All right. I'll do another one for you. And then I'll let you start putting these. Well, how about you try this one until it gets a little bit more difficult. Next one gets a little bit more difficult. So go ahead and try to rewrite this one. Stop the video, start it back up, and I'll show you what you should get. All right. So bring this 3 up, this 5 up, this 3 up. Bring up your coefficients first. Then work left to right. These guys first. So we go log base 6 of x to the 3rd over x to the 5th plus log base 6 of x to the 3rd. Okay, you can go ahead and simplify this into log base 6. 3 minus 5 is negative 2. Since the uh, exponent's negative, we drop that into the denominator and make the exponent positive. Plus log base 6 of x to the third. Now, addition turns into multiplication. So we go log base 6. We've got to go 1 over x squared times x to the third. A little bit of diagonally simplifying here. Gets this log base 6 of, um, well, 3 minus 2 is 1, or 2x's dividing out 3 leaves us with 1x, and so we just get log base 6 of x. Okay? Hopefully that makes enough sense. Um, if these sort of simpler ones don't. Make sure you come in and get some help, right? All right, now things are going to get a little bit more complicated, so let's try some of these out. This first guy, I still want to bring coefficients up as exponents, but be careful with some of these. So we're going to get log base 7 of 64 to the 1 half power minus log base 7 of 2x to the third power plus log base 7 of 27 to the 1 third power. Now remember a couple of things. One thing right now, right? This 2x is in parentheses. So this cubed needs to go to both the 2 and the x. We can rewrite these fraction exponents as radicals. So this turns into the square root of 64. This guy turns into the cube root of 27. So log base 7 of 8 minus, and I'm going to go ahead and cube all of that, log base 7 of 2 cubed is 8, x to the third, plus the cube root of 27, log base 7 of 3. Now working left to right, do the division here first. Subtraction leads to division, log base 7 of 8 over 8x to the third plus log base 7 of 3. The 8's here will divide out, so we get log base 7 of 1 over x to the third, plus log base 7 of 3. Addition turns to multiplication. 
So we get log base 7 of 1 over x to the third times 3, which turns into log base 7 of 3 over x to the 3, x to the third. Okay? Okay. All right. Try this one. Stop the video, start it back up, and see how you do. Okay, bring your coefficients up first. So this turns into log base 11 of 2 to the 4th minus log base 11 of y to the 5th minus log base 11 of 2 to the third. And then you can um, multiply that out, log base 11 of 16 minus log base 11 of y to the fifth minus log base 11 of 8. Now, left to right, the first two log base 11 of 16 over y to the fifth minus log base 11 of 8. Now, because there's another division here, division goes to, I'm sorry, subtraction. Since there's another subtraction here, subtraction goes to division, which means that 8 needs to be in the denominator of our fraction. So I can just slide the 8 in here with the y to the fifth. And then I can divide the 16 and the 8 out, leaving me with log base 11 of 2 over y to the 5th. A lot of rewriting, but that's going to really help you a lot. Don't be afraid to rewrite. Okay? All right. All right, so now we're going to get into using the calculator to actually evaluate logarithms. To this point, we haven't been able to do that. Um, and, again, it... It goes with, well, we'll talk about that in a second, but um, log of 24, there is a button on your calculator that says L-O-G log. We talked before that there's not a base written for your logarithm, it's always base 10, right? So if I want to know what log of 24 is, we can use that button on your calculator, okay? So, um, on your graphing or even on a scientific calculator, if you hit log and then 24, close your parentheses, and then hit enter, that'll give you a value, 1.38. And that is the power you need on 10. Remember, this is an exponent, an exponent on your base. So, 10 to the 1.38 power we'll make 24. Actually, we, we obviously rounded the 1.38 off to the nearest hundredth. But that's what the log button does on your calculator. It tells you what exponent to put on 10 to get the number inside the logarithm. Okay? If I want to know what log of 0.2987 is, same thing. Use that log button. Oh, I've already forgotten what it was. 0.2987. So 0 0.2... Oh, sorry. Log of 0.2987. I didn't close my parentheses, but I should have. And that only matters if you start stringing some functions together, right? So make sure you close that parentheses. But right now it's not going to matter. So you get negative 0.524 or negative 0.52. Okay? If you want to multiply... Uh, negative 6 into this logarithm, log of 7 halves. It's no problem. All you got to do is type it in as a multiplication problem. Okay? So, negative 6 times log of 7. You make sure you use the division button for your fraction. And then it'll do all that for you. So, negative 3.26. Okay? So now we're just evaluating logarithms. Try typing in log of 0. Log 
of zero. Enter. Ah, your calculator should blow up. Why is it blowing up? Because again, this means what power do I need to put on 10 to get zero? What exponent can I raise 10 to to get zero? Don't say zero because 10 to the zero is one. There is no exponent that we can put on 10 to make that zero. This doesn't work. It doesn't make any sense. So that's why your calculator won't do it. Okay? It also won't do log of negative 2. Because, again, what power do you put on x to get negative 2? And there's not one. You can't turn 10 into negative 2. Okay? So if you have a negative inside your logarithm, that's a problem, too. Your calculator won't do that because there's, there's no value that, that, that you could get for that. Okay? So no zeros and no negatives in your logarithms. Now, what about different bases? Because logarithms can have other bases than 10, right? We've seen a ton of these with different bases. And most calculators won't just go do log of different bases. Some will. Um, and if you want to know if your calculator will, come see me and we'll figure it out. But for everybody, we can use what's called the change of base formula. If I want to know what the logarithm of a different base other than 10 of an argument is, then I can actually change that into a division problem and make that log base 10 of the argument divided by log base 10 of the index. Turn, turn it into log base 10 because our calculator will do log base 10. This formula was thought up long, long ago, right? For example, if I want to know what log of 81, log base 81 of 27 is, your calculator might not do log base 81. Most of them won't. So to get that same value, we can make these log base 10s, but it's log base 10 of the argument, which is 27, over log base 10 of the original base, which is 81. And we can type that into our calculator and get the same value. Now, this is where you're going to really want to be careful with closing your parentheses. Okay? I've already forgotten. Uh, 27 is in the numerator. So we go log of 27 and close that parentheses. Because now we're going to divide by log of 81. Okay? And we want to make sure that it does log of 27 first before it divides. And we should get 0 0.75. Okay, so that's how we're going to use our calculator to get some of these values. Use your calculator to get log base 12 of 14. Switch this up into the log of 14 divided by log of 12. See what you get, and then I'll show you what I got. Okay, 14 in the numerator. All right, so um, what was it again? Oh, 14 over 12. So we go log of 14, close your parentheses, divided by log of 12, and close your parentheses, and did you get 1.06? I hope you did. Okay. Same thing here, even fractions. It'll still handle fractions. We can still type in log of 11 over log of 1 third and get this value. Right? So go log of 11, close your parentheses, divided by log of 1 third, use your division button for your fraction, and it'll give you negative 2.18. That's your value. Okay, now, um, that allows us to solve these exponential equations. Before, we would try to rewrite 6 as base 2 to a power so we can drop the base 2s, the exponent base 2s, and leave and solve the exponents. But unfortunately, we can't do that with 6. So now we're introducing ourselves to the idea of, okay, if we can't make both bases the same on either side, then we can switch this to log form. This becomes log base 2. These other place with your root, log base 2 of 6 equals x. And now we can use our change of base to find log base 2 of x, or 6. Go log of 6 divided by log of 2. 
right? And when you do that, you should get two point five eight. Okay. Same thing here. I can't turn 22 into base 4 to a power, so I rewrite this. Log base 4 of 22 equals x. So use our change of base, log of 22 over log of 4, and you should get, did you hear the clicks of my calculator, 2.23. If you're not getting these values, you've got to come see me so we can figure out why. Okay? Again, fractions do not matter. Um, I cannot rewrite 15 as base 1 half or base 2. So I'm going to rewrite this as a logarithm equation. So log base 1 half of 15 is equal to x. So our change of base has us doing log of 15 over log of a half and we type that in log of 15 divided by log of a half making sure that we use our division button and you should get negative 3.91 okay all right uh, a couple of multi steps here so even after we do our log change base we might have to do a few more things to solve so here's what I mean we cannot rewrite 41 as 8 to a power so we make the change to a logarithmic equation log base 8 of 41 equals negative 7 X plus 1 so even after we do our change of base log of 41 over log of 8 we're still going to do some work right so log of 41 divided by log of 8 gives us basically 1.79 but I'm not gonna write that out okay I'm gonna do this I'm gonna get my um, I'm gonna get my decimal in my calculator and leave it there and then continue solving for X we know that we have to subtract 1 and then divide by negative 7 so with my 1.78585 that I have in my calculator right now I'm gonna subtract 1 and then divide by negative 7. That way I don't have to worry about rounding my decimal until I'm completely finished and get negative 0 0.11. Okay? Alright. Um, this next one. We have to get, it's like logarithmic equations where you have to get the log by itself. Same thing here. We have to get the exponent base by itself by adding 8 to both sides. Get 9 to the x plus 4 equals 80. Now we know that we can't rewrite 80 as base 9, so we go log base 9 of 80 equals x plus 4. We do our change of base for this and then subtract 4 from it. So log base 80 divided by, no, sorry, log of 80 divided by log of 9. Now I'm going to subtract 4, and so x is equal to negative 2.01. Okay? One more example. Again, same thing. We've got to subtract 6. We get 10 to the x equals 984. Cannot rewrite 984 as base 10, so we have to switch it over to log form. We go log base 10 of 984 equals x, and now we don't even need change of base. We can go right into log 984 and get the value of x, which is 2.99. Okay? Hope that makes enough sense. So give your homework a shot. If you have any questions, make sure you come find me. We'll go over it, and uh, we'll see you next time.